Hello, hello. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. So, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Karim, Professor Karim Buzula. Uh, I know Karim from more than seven, eight years ago. We met the first time at the Alexo, the Arabic League for Education, Culture, and Science uh, in Tunis. And it was a big pleasure at that time meeting him. Since then, we stayed in contact. We worked together uh, in many projects related to Arabic and natural language processing. Uh, Karim is one of the experts in the area. Uh, he has a great work and great contribution to the field. Uh, Karim is also a professor of computer science in the Mohammedia School of Engineering at Mohammed Sank University in Rabat. Uh, he has uh, over 70 public, uh, published papers and two books uh, in the field. Uh, and uh, one of uh, the topics that he's going to talk about today for his tutorial is the Safar framework for Arabic NLP. This is very important. Uh, we know to build applications, we need frameworks, we need tools. And Karim is going to talk about uh, one of uh, the important tools in the Arabic NLP field. So without further ado, Karim. Thank you, Ahmed. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for the invitation. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, Safar as a framework if you want to develop in the context of Arabic NLP. Uh, the presentation uh, will contain two parts. The first part, I made it myself, uh, sort of background, theoretical part, and the second part will be the, the real uh, tutorial that will be made by uh, the PhD student who working on this, on this uh, framework. Uh, so if you have technical questions, then it could be possible to ask. Um, maybe we're not going to take the, the whole hour. I know you are extremely tired. Um, so if you want to interrupt me at any time, feel free uh, to do it. If you have any questions regarding Arabic language itself, I assume you know some of the basics about Arabic, but it is not the case. Just please, uh, you have the freedom to uh, interrupt and ask any questions. Okay. Uh, so, uh, also want to say that um, it's not really sort of why questions. It's more how, okay, and what, what we're going to present and how to do it. Um, um, what will be the tutorial about? When you want to develop, this is something that already exists in other languages, but this is specific to Arabic, right? Uh, in general, when you want to develop, uh, we have seen yesterday and today, the maturity of the applications that were presented, especially in English, is very high compared to what we already know in Arabic. And one of the reasons is these software engineering problems we are facing. We don't have that much tools, we don't have that much resources for the Arabic language. So one of the challenges we are facing in Arabic, uh, I've been working in Arabic NLP for maybe, let's say, more than 10 years, and we are still suffering, even if it's not a uh, low resourced language, but we're still suffering from the lack of resources. So if we cannot boost anyway, uh, then one, one of the possibilities is at least to offer a, a framework that, he, that can be used to, to boost this, this development. So in general, if you want to give, uh, first of all, uh, this framework, I'm not going to, what we do, what we don't do. We, are, we, we don't do optical character recognition. We don't do speech processing, but we do text processing. Somehow it is, they are related because, for example, when you do speech processing, then text processing is called at, the, at, the, at some stages, uh, and it's the same also for optical character recognition. And we consider that text, we have two levels of, of development. You either work on the language itself, basic uh, um, tools about language, the morphology, the parsing, and then at the application level. Right. When you, when, when you develop, what is available when, when you have a program, when you have an application that you want to develop, 
Most of the time, as computer scientists, we think directly about a programming language. We do know we don't have a specific, a dedicated language for AI, uh, neither for uh, NLP, and of course, it's the case is worse for Arabic NLP. Right. So, however, different tools have been developed by researchers, by PhD students all over the world. But the problem, these tools are scattered all over the world and they are not centralized somewhere. And when you take, you have your own application that you want to develop, sometimes you need, for example, to tokenize, to make some morphological analyzer, some parsing. You want to use some resources such as WordNet. You have these engineering problems, such as uh, this tokenizer has been developed on the Windows system, the other one on Linux. This one is commercial, not free. Uh, this one is allowing us to receive the service using some text instead of objects, etc. So when you want to use some, uh, you want to develop your own application, you have these uh, engineering problems. And uh, most of the time, what you do, you take this one as a tokenizer, you take the other one as a morphological analyzer, but um, when you combine all of them, the, the, the work is feasible, but it takes a lot of time. We can take another example, such as when you want to develop machine translation system, you may, depending, of course, on the approach you are uh, using, but you may need a morphological analyzer, you may need also syntactic parser so on and so forth. So, of course, this uh, problem has been solved for other languages, such as English, French, etc. And you, probably you might already be aware of uh, these architectures, such as Gate, Yuma, NLTK. Um, some of the presentation uh, talked about or used these, these frameworks. <coughs> so, now, what do we need when we want to develop, want to boost? Uh, you want to be, you want, you, you, you need when you want to develop some application, these kind of, of, of tools, you want them to be, all of them available. You need some, you need some tools, first of all, more for analyzer, parsers, etc. You need some resources, uh, uh, such as lexicon, corpora, etc. And you need to have some, you have to respect some uh, uh, software engineering features, such as you need to have some maintenance, some flexibility, and you need to have some, uh, the, the possibility to have pipelines to combine all of these in a, in a, in a given problem. Of course, you have to differentiate. If you, now I'm talking about software engineering uh, 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 scope, uh, we have to differentiate between what is a toolkit, what is a platform, and w what we did is really a framework. Uh, uh, of course, uh, all of them are of different uh, levels. Uh, a toolkit you have, it is a toolkit that contains many, many processes, but it's one, 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 bo one, one box and you have one entry point, one ending point without the possibility to go inside and extract what you need. However, when you have a framework, it is a conceptual structure that is developed in order to be used as a support to build other programs. It is also a layered structure, okay? Now, what are the architectures that allow us to, if you want to work with Arabic, what you do? You already have some of the tools, such as Madamira, ATKS of Microsoft, uh, Arabic Toolkit System, I think, NLTK, so on and so forth. And Safari is among all of these. So here we need to compare and take a look at what is available. So we have uh, a comparison between, in terms of Arabic tools, what do they offer? Uh, if you take, for example, the case of, uh, let's say, uh, which one can I take? Okay, if I take the case of Ara NLP developed uh, at the University of Essex, you can see that they, all, they, they contain some tools, but they have stopped at this level. If you take any other one, you see, they put some tools and they stop. We don't have a continuity in adding new, new tools inside. Uh, for Safar, what we did, we are still working since uh, 2008. We have analyzers, we have stemmers, parsers, etc. And uh, at the language level, but also at the application level. Uh, at the beginning, when the, the project started in, let's say, a little bit before 2008, 
uh, we put the architecture and we said we are going to develop everything from scratch. And uh, we uh, submitted an article at LREC and one of the reviewers said, okay, it's interesting, but what if I would like to use your project, but I would like also I mean, your tools, but I already, I want to use also backwater morphological analyzer that was very famous at that time. And here came the idea of having in the same architecture, in the same framework, all what is available instead of having to reinvent the wheel every time. Okay? So that was the idea. The idea when a tool at a given layer is already, pro is already available, don't waste time to redo it and reproduce it. Okay? While when you have some uh, given layer that is not provided or some tool that is not provided, some resource, then we, we, we do it. We also, uh, uh, this is I think one of the, uh, the, 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 the cons of some the, the tools that are available or frameworks, they don't contain that much resources while we also uh, 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 sorry, provide uh, resources uh, I'm going to uh, talk about little, uh, some of them later on. Uh, in terms of flexibility, now if you want to have some flexibility for people using the, the framework, you need to have the input and output in different formats, not only in text, but also in terms of XML files, but very important in terms of objects. Instead of having always to go outside your, your, your hard drive and read your files, it is important to have the objects available so you can define your own pipeline. Okay, in terms of maintenance and support, we are still supporting, we are still uh, giving answers. This is a, another view of what is available and the comparison with the other uh, frameworks. Okay, with this, I'm not saying we are the best at all. I'm just saying, if you want to work with Arabic NLP, if, if you work in the context of Arabic NLP, then Safar is one of the possibilities. Now, if you have in your application only one tool to use, such as a tokenizer, no need to download the whole platform, the whole framework, okay? Some tools are available, very light platforms are available uh, to, to do this. Uh, if you want to, um, you are using not only Arabic, but Arabic, for example, machine translation, you wanna use Arabic with, combined with, let's say, uh, uh, English or French, then you need to combine with other platforms such as, such, such as Gate, for example, etc. So it's not the solution of every, every, every problem, okay? But it is one of the, uh, we consider, interesting solutions when you work in, uh, specifically for Arabic. Okay, the act, the, this is the, the architecture of the system. You, uh, this is on the right with dashed lines. You have this is the API. It comes as an API, and the client applications is separate. Applications are separated from from the API. Um, the uh, the API is written in Java, and we do have a, a web interface. We decided to provide the web interface because most of the users are also linguists and they don't know how to program. So we provide this as interface for the linguists to be able to to test and see the uh, the different tools. And we also try. We also um, uh, provide some of the t some of the layers uh, as web services. If you want to call the, uh, the, the 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 whole framework from other languages such as Python or Perl. Okay. For the others. Uh, layers, you have also, you have of course the basic services, you starting from morphology, syntax, and semantics, and then you have also the resources services. It is important to mention here that the resources are available freely as uh, respecting the standards such as LMF or TEI for corpora, but at the same time, these services are available as methods, as API, as functions, which means if you are a programmer, you can connect to your resources without having to open the file, etc. You can do it very quickly with the API. It is also interesting, if I take uh, to explain this, the, the bottom layer, the statistics and the benchmark, let's say in, uh, at, the, at, the, at the level of the morphology, I have two stammers. I have some pre-processing to make for some machine learning. I tokenize, 
I uh, take off the, the stop words, uh, and then I stem my text. Suppose I have two stammers, and I want to see the impact of choosing this stammer in comparison to another stammer. So in general, you have to install, you have to uh, download, etc. Here, because of the available stammers are already included, we change, we can compare very quickly between the two and see the impact of the whole application just by changing one line. Okay, which is, I think, very important for any, any process that uses the combination of all of this. You can very quickly test and see the impact of the whole application. Of course, at the, at the, uh, uh, at the top, you have the applications. And you can see also, this is, those are not, uh, le, uh, they are not le, um, uh, levels, but they are separate layers, which means from the application, I can directly go to the tools. Okay, or from the basic, I can go into the tools and vice versa. You have a flexibility to call any part you want. Those are the, the modules, the tools that are available at the application level, the morphology. We have morphological analyzers and stammers. We have included the most known um, in terms of morphology. Al Khalil, first and second version. Backwalter, Madame Mira of, uh, of Nizar Habash. ATKS of Microsoft. So all of them are available. The, all the known stammers, we have our own stammer also. And two syntactic parsers, only two are available right now for Arabic. And different utilities, most of them are used in machine learning, etc., as pre-process, or maybe in sometimes as post-process for OCR. And we have a list of resources, such, such as Lexicon, the Clitics, uh, the both word nets, I mean, the first version of Arabic WordNet and the second version of Arabic WordNet, WordNet are available. And two dictionaries. One uh, Al-Wasit dictionary and also a contemporary Arabic dictionary. Uh, what else to say? That's it. Okay, those are the references. Okay. And we, uh, our project is not closed. Anyone can contribute, can participate. Uh, everyone is, is mentioned in the, somewhere in the, from the menu. Uh, we are thinking also with Kamal to expand this to include not only MSA but also dialects. So we're going to have an extension of this platform to uh, be able to process also dialects. Uh, this is the API, Javadoc for, for the, the, all the methods that are available. Those are the, the resources if you want to download them as, as a row. Uh, raw files, and as I said, they are also available as uh, using methods. Okay, this is the web interface that you can get into from this menu, Safar Web. You have the web. You can see here that I have clicked on morphology, then on uh, stammer, and then I give one sentence. I click on uh, stem, and you have the, the, uh, the list of the uh, output. And here, as you can see, I select the stammer I want to test, okay? So this is mainly for linguists and not for computer scientists, not for developers and coders. Okay, so some help are available. You have examples here. Okay, maybe I can show you directly. Okay, so we have here different examples, sort of tutorials if you want to, to test. Okay. So we have here different examples, sort of tutorials if you want to. You have a uh, YouTube channel if you want to see how to use, which are explained also by clicking here on the menu. And you have the contact and report backs menu. If you want to get in touch with us, you want to participate, you have questions, etc. Okay, we have up to now 260 more or less uh, users have downloaded from different countries. We can mention some uh, universities in Morocco that have used it and Telecom Bretagne from France who used this platform, Montreal University and a Jordanian company um, if I remember, they are working in speech processing and they are using our platform for some 
of their staff. Uh, different countries, Morocco, Algeria, of course, Tunisia, etc. Sometimes from China, from Croatia, uh, downloading the, the platform. Okay, so we're going to start the demo. Uh, if you want to download, you go to this very easy, Arabic, etc. You can download from this one. And if you have no questions, I'm going to show you, uh, Yunus is going to show you the, the real tutorial with the examples, how to use it, etc. Uh, except if you have questions, I can stop now. And we can we continue? Continue first. Yes. So you mentioned that you have like a, you have the parsers and, and a stemmer, all the tools. Yes. You have these tools that are developed somewhere else and then you incorporate all of them in the framework or you have your own uh, stemmer, your own parser? This is what I said. When we see that something is already developed, has already been developed elsewhere, uh, um, reaching a certain level of accuracy, uh, acceptable accuracy, then we include it. When we see that something is not available, okay, then we, we develop it by our own. Okay. So okay. This, this can serve as a repository of every, of all the Arabic tools that exactly. can be used. Exactly, exactly. Instead of making, okay. thank you. I mean, it, it is really great work, appreciate it. Uh, I have a quick question. It is, I think it is very hard for you guys to maintain this idea of any time a tool is available, you are gonna do it yourself. You don't think it's a better idea to open the platform for anyone with the contract that you have with him. It's like, this is the interface. Come register your tool. Uh, and, and in this case, you don't have to do the integration yourself, but you provide a platform for everyone uh, to register his tool and make it available for everyone else. Yeah, this is what I said. It is said here from the way we, uh, 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 currently we have the second version. We have released the second version. Soon in some, uh, maybe two or three months, we're gonna release the third one. But from the, the second version, we said the project is open to your contributions. So anyone can get in touch with us. Maybe you can, yes, I agree with you, we can put just a uh, web interface so people can directly, uh, but there is a problem. Um, yeah. Uh, downloading and putting the, 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 the tool inside is quite easy. Where the work, the, the effort was made where exactly? If you take the case of a morphological analyzer, the output of a morphological analyzer is not yet standardized. So how are you going to standardize the output of a morphological analyzer? If you take the case of Nizar Habaj, he's doing it a certain way. The others are doing it another way. So you have to standardize. That's why when you ask people to, if you want to, to, to contribute with us, they have at least to have the same standard. But yes, I do agree with you. As I said, it's open. Anyone can participate. Yes. Yeah, this is a great uh, work as we discussed several times, and it is very interesting. And as you presented before, uh, we have to extend it to, to dialects because the challenge today is in, in dialect. So, but the, um, the material rule for using this is corpora, par corpora. And um, did you uh, expect to, to have also corpora in, in Safa? Because I think that you will have more connections if you have data. Data is, is, is the oil of, uh, of this kind of matter. And we can, we can contribute, we can um, give you details, uh, data about dialects and things like that. As I said, we have this layer called resources. So all the resources can be put there. Yeah, but what uh, are the, 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 um, the, the corpora you have at, yeah, at the moment? Yeah, th this is what I said. You have here, uh, we have no, 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 no corpora yet. Yeah, this, yeah. But we have some lexicon and dictionaries. But okay. inside, it is already uh, uh, 
prévu. Il est déjà... Vous pouvez m'aider. Prévu. Plan. Non, c'est un autre mot. Ok, plan. Vous n'aimez pas ce mot. Non, je n'aime pas. Ok, plan. Yes. Ok. But but you don't have corpora uh, right now. No. Okay. Okay. I think that it could be good to to have corpora. Yeah. Sure. Sure. We can do it. Maybe for for MSA it's it's not the problem, but for specific corpora it could be very interesting because for MSA everyone you have giga ward you have a lot of things like that, but for specific corpora it could be very interesting for for Safa. Uh, maybe w what is interesting is the uh, when you have a noted corpora and you don't have that much a noted corpora. I mean, I think having corpora just for the fun to have corpora, that's okay. We can look. Statistical methods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of statistical course. methods. You don't need when you develop language models or things like that. You don't yeah. need. Uh, annotated corpora. Actually, we have a, 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 a dialect of Moroccan dialect. Sorry, a corpora corpus for Moroccan dialect. So once we will start the dialect version of Safar, yes, it could be included. <laughs> Any other questions before we go to uh, the uh, demo? And the demo. The, I mean, the tool you are going to show. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Yunus is going to present the demo. Any other is it your question? No. no. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, questions are open if you want to ask later on. No problem. Yunus. I So m maybe another question, since he's uh, installing the machine. So one challenge that you will face as well it is how to update those yes. tools, how to, to refresh them. I, I'm saying one challenge that you will have is how to refresh these tools, how to make them updated to the language evolves every day. Are you planning? What is your plan of addressing these issues? As I said, well, uh, we wanted to stabilize uh, at the first uh, stage the uh, the basic resources of the language, the morphology, the syntax, and eventually the semantics, in addition to the uh, resources, right? Uh, we uh, are now currently working on a morphological generator. We don't have that much morphological generator for Arabic. Uh, once this will be done, we are working also we are starting working on some applications such as sentiment analysis, summarizers, so on and so forth, that could be included also in the... And at any time, uh, if uh, other tools with a better accuracy uh, happen or uh, appear, then we can also include them. But so far, in terms of morology and stemming, I think people are quite satisfied with the level of accuracy that, uh, that is reached for, for morphology and, and stemming. Not, not for parsing, for example. So yes, it needs, of course, continuous uh, uh, maintenance. Um, what I wanted to say is that um, you have to, I mean, this is a very valuable resource that I think you have to protect it from, not protected from the academia, but protected from me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not from Google, but like from 
because Arabic is, 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 is up and coming, right? Like, I know that there are multiple startups <laughs> from Egypt, from all, the, from all the region, that are trying to do uh, web annotation for, uh, for Arabic and all this kind of thing. They would need something like that. So if they can just download this and use it commercially, this is not right. Correct. So we need to I discuss. Think, yeah, I think you need you need something like that. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. My first. Thought. I mean, it, it, it's it's uh, we are aware of it. We haven't yet have the time to find the solution. I know we have GPL, we have this kind of stuff, etc. But we're just to settle down and see what are the possibilities to, to which one is would be the best best uh, that best fits our our needs. Yeah. And and when you said that you have users from like. Croatia or like China. I don't want to speculate but those are probably um, uh, what do you call it um, mm. th third I mean oh, uh, like people who do programming for let's say other startups that I does see. a notation because I, see. I am aware of such thing okay that's like one company in Egypt was contracting with some company in the Eastern Europe in order to do this so I'm not saying that this is the same one, but I'm saying you have to protect yourself. Yeah, I see. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is... Uh, my name is Yunus Jafar. And uh, I'm a PhD student under the supervision of uh, Mr. Karim Bouzouba. I will try in this demonstration to show you how to use Safar platform within your projects. I know you are tired. I will now go through deep details. I will just try to give an overview of how to use it. And it is up to you to go to the website and uh, see more details if you are in interested with using Safar. So I have prepared four examples. The first one, in the first one, I will try to, to split an input text into several sentences, to normalize the sentences, and then to transliterate these sentences. So the input texts can be either texts or a file. So it is up to you to choose to choose your input input text. So in this uh, line, I will call the sentence splitter, suffer sentence splitter. It is a tool that take into that takes an input text and provides several sentences according to what you what you have specified as a splitter. As you know, an input text can have several punctuations, such as the dot, the comma, etc., the space, and the researchers try often to split texts according to several, to several uh, delimiters or characters. So Safar will help you to specify which is the character or which is the word that you want to split your texts according to, to it. So the next step is to normalize. The normalization consists of removing some words, removing some characters uh, that are not uh, interest, uh, interesting or uh, that you are not interested to keep in your texts and you want to remove them, for example, if you are uh, processing an Arabic text, you want to remove all uh, non-Arabic letters, such as French letters, etc. The last process is the transliteration. As you know, many researchers uh, transliterate words before processing them because uh, of uh, several uh, reasons. Uh, and there are several transliter transliteration systems, such as Backwater, for example. So uh, Safar takes this, takes this into account, 
and gives you the opportunity to choose what is the transliteration system to use. So if I execute this example, I will get this output. So the output of this uh, processing is you have the input texts, you have the sentences. So uh, as you as you see, I will just as you see the default delimiter is the dot, is the point. So the software sentence splitter uh, splits the text according to the dot and returns all your sentences. Then we normalize the, the, uh, the sentences by removing any characters such as punctuation. And the last step is the transliteration. This is done with few lines of code, as you, as you see here. We have really small codes. And Safar uh, helps you avoid this uh, repetitive uh, processing that is uh, that uh, that uh, exists in several processing and uh, to so the next example consists of I'll just the next example consists of uh, morphological analysis of an input text and get the lemma of words. So we start by calling the morphological analyzer to use. We have several ones uh, such as Madamira, uh, Al-Khalil, Bama, etc. These are already developed and we have integrated them within the platform. We take an input text and we call the analysis process and we get the results in uh, memory objects. Then we, we manipulate these uh, memory objects to, to print or to output different morphological analysis such as stem, type, root, pattern, part of speech, lemma, etc. This is detail. I will now uh, go through these uh, details. All of them are available in the website. So if I launch the process, you can get, for example, this output. So for that sentence, we have for each word, each stem, its type, root, pattern, post, lemma, etc. And you can choose what uh, morphological analyzer to use by just modifying one line of code and get the appropriate one. We have several ones, for example, get the ITKS implementation, Al-Khalil version 2, Bama, Madamira, etc. So it, it become easy to process uh, texts to output morphological information. In the third example, we will remove stop words from an input text, then tokenize the text, get all possible critics, and we will use here the level, the resources level. Then we output the stem or the lamp based on critics and search for the stem if it exists within the interactive dictionary. So the input text can be either a file or a text. We tokenize, we call the to software tokenizer. Then we tokenize the, uh, the text and we get tokens in, tokens in an array. For each token, we get all, we call the service uh, of uh, critic and we get all critic combination possible. Then for each combination, we search in the, contemporary, in the interactive dictionary to see if the, the, the stem or the lamp exists within it or no. So if I execute this example, it takes some time, of course, because the resource is loaded into memory. 
So, for example, I can get such something like this. Uh, for each word, we get the possible potential critics and the corresponding stem or lem. Then we search in the uh, interactive dictionary to see if it is uh, present or, n or not. And the, the results, the accuracy of results depends, of course, of the uh, interactive dictionary. So, for example, we can get uh, here uh, at Dawla. For example, this, this part is considered as a prefix. And uh, we have uh, the noun, the stem. It is a noun according to the interactive dictionary. The last example consists of So the last example consists of uh, normalizing a text normalizing the text then removing stop words stemming then detecting the sentiment of stems this is really a light sentiment this is not a sentiment uh, processing this, this is just to show you how Safar can help into, and how we can build uh, some lexicon within Safar to help in advanced processing uh, systems. So the input file can be either an input or a file. We normalize the text using the Safar normalizer. And uh, one thing should be mentioned is that every method within Safar is uh, implement uh, implemented within uh, with several uh, possibilities, so users can have the uh, ch uh, can choose wh which one is suitable for them. So we normalize the text, we remove all stop words, we tokenize the text, we, s we proceed to the stemming of uh, each token by calling the st stemmers, which are available within Safar. Uh, then we detect sentiments of stems based on a lexicon that I have, pre that I have uh, uh, created within Safar, just to show you that it is possible within Safar to create your own lexicon within the same, uh, with the same uh, structure of other lexicons and to use them by the same IPE without modifying anything. So I have... Uh, Dictionary. Lexicon. I want just to show you uh, the, the lexicon that I have uh, created. So it is a data simple data in which I have uh, provided several uh, words with their uh, type, which means that if they are positive, if they contain positive feeling, negative feeling, or neutral. So if I, if I launch this example, We can get, for example, for, that, for this input text, which is which, is, uh, which contain uh, some words with a positive feeling, we can get these results. For example, Jamilun, uh, positive, uh, positive, positive, etc. So this is just to show that uh, Safar, in Safar, you can add lexicon as you want. Uh, you can add lexicon according to your needs. You can add uh, processing uh, implementations according to your needs, or use the one, ones that exist within Safar. I think this is all. If you, have, if you are interested, you can go to the website of Safar. 
and you have uh, several examples uh, to that uh, illustrates how to use the different levels of safar, so applications, morphology, etc. You have some videos also to show how to use this uh, platform. You have the API resources and other uh, resources if you want. Uh, that is, uh, I think, <laughs> it is all uh, I can say. And thanks. If you have any questions, you are welcome. Thank you. Any questions? I will ask one then. What is the size of the lexicon? Sorry? The size of the lexicon you use for steaming. Because when you, you have a word, a dawla, okay. you need to look for if dawla is a word in the dictionary or not. So what is the size of this dictionary? The size of the dictionary the used number by of the, the stemmer. entries, yes. Uh, it depends on the stemmer. We, we, ha we have not developed uh, ah, okay. our okay. one. Okay. We have de developed yeah, our yeah. one. I we forget these details. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have another question. So, how you guys are planning to handle bugs, maintaining this site, uh, all that? Uh, do you how, how are you planning to address all these issues related to engineering issues, but they are very important? Uh, if I have uh, well understood your question, you, uh, you ask about how to uh, bugs. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, we follow uh, structures of uh, of uh, we, yes. Uh, there is a library called Find Bugs which we have uh, included within Safar. Uh, it analyzes the whole code and uh, tries to identify bugs or bugs within the framework. So if there, is, uh, the, there are any conflicts uh, while processing the data, the find bugs will uh, alert and uh, give uh, uh, more information about that. So, yes. That is one part of it, if you'd like. Okay, to okay. Uh, we, have, we, we try to ensure some quality of the code. And to do so, we have, from the beginning, we are using two, uh, 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 two tools for software engineering. One of them is check style that you include, you plug in your, in your IDE, uh -huh. in your system, to respect the coding of Java. On one, on, this is on one side. On the other side, we have worked with another tool called Findbacks. Okay, which try to um, to plan to <laughs> prévoir. Uh, uh, it's not plan. Uh, anticipate, if you want. Yeah, anticipate the bugs that might occur during the execution. Okay, so or our coding respect these two these two perfectly. It's it's textile approved and it's fine bugs approved. Okay, but of course, yes, more robustness, more. Uh, metrics in terms of software engineering have also to be such as stressing the whole system, for example, how this could be done. Of course, yes. More robustness. Any other questions? So you're relying on a lot of external software developed by other people, right? You're using a lot of software developed by other people. So suppose that, say, you know, the people who developed one of your uh, you know, parser decide to release a new version how do you how do you handle this how do you include now the new version in your in in your uh, you know repository and we, we consider it as if it was a new tool because we we have uh, okay some tools are provided first of all we don't consider commercial tools okay we just uh, include what is available on the on the, on, the, on the on the web if they are open source, then we can see the, 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 the code, etc. But we, we, don't, we don't touch the code. We leave it as it is, because it's not our own code, okay? We want, we want it to behave exactly as if it was alone, right? From one side. From the other side, uh, 
if there is a uh, sometimes the, the the tool itself could be a sort of black box it could be a sort of library itself so we don't see what is inside okay so we, sometimes you have uh, if you take the, the case of al khalil which is a an arabic morphological analyzer the first version has almost nothing to do with the third version the first one could be a rule based approach the third one could be a machine learning approach so i don't have the the, the i mean it's it's not my my job to to go inside the code and touch something the the, the only thing is the interface between me and the 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 and the code itself okay i expect from a from a more focused analyzer to give me back or to output the stem the lemma this and that so even if it is a new one maybe i don't have the right to see what is inside so i just consider it as a new as a new tool even if it is a new version okay but but some of those tools are maybe available somewhere you know on on github or whatever and people are actively working on it and maybe on a daily basis there's new code submitted to that tool so how do you you know so what do you do do you make a copy at a given time of, of that tool or you continuously link or refer to this kind of moving target that is this software dependency that you have uh, provided by someone else and that is constantly changing and i don't understand how you how you keep track of that if you take the case of ATKS, which is a uh, Microsoft uh, tool, uh, it is called with web services. So an, even if they change, I have no problem. Okay. While if someone is providing a new tool with new code, so except if he t tells me exactly we are changing this part of code, this part of code, which is not in general the case. So I have no no means by which I can check exactly which the it is easier for me to consider it from scratch as if it was if it was a new tool. Okay. 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 So I have no no means by which I can Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask if you plan to make the, this framework available on GitHub so we can have, I don't know, um, people can contribute uh, to the framework as well. And I don't know, maybe update you on some of the tools used to something? Okay. Uh, GitHub is a possibility, but we cannot apply it in our case. Uh, simply because if you take the case of WordNet that you understand, for example, uh, in, in WordNet, uh, if I put it there with a given... Um, uh, set of methods. These methods may be used, but in my case, I have to respect some standard. Do you understand? Uh, not really. Not, not really. Okay. Uh, if I put it on GitHub, then people can come and include their own code, but I'm not sure that they are respecting the standard that has to be respected. Um, but on GitHub, you can check back the code that they would like. Okay, to maybe. Add. Okay, okay. In this case, yes, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's possible. Yeah, thank you. But on GitHub, you can check back the code that they would like. Okay, maybe. Okay, okay. In this case, yes. Maybe. Any other question? Okay, so let's thank the speaker again and close the session. Okay. Um, Thank you very much, uh, Karim, and uh, sorry, Yunus, uh, for this presentation of the tutorial. Uh, it was the last of uh, the day. Thank you, Ahmed, also for chairing this session. And uh, I, what I have to say, we are at the end of the day, the end of the conference. I don't know if I have to see fortunately or unfortunately, we arrive at the end. Uh, so, I, we can proceed to the closing session, so I will ask uh, Dr. Dury and Dr. Munzakur to come here. Um, so, uh, these two days were pretty uh, interesting for me, I, I hope that it was the case for you. I was very happy with the, uh, the quality of the presentations. Of course, I don't speak about the keynotes, which are high-level keynotes. Thank you very much for coming from very far, and uh, you give us a lot of details about some things, about a lot of things. 
even if we read a lot, but we, I think that we learned a lot today and yesterday with you. I would like also to thank all the, uh, the, the, uh, the PhD student and the researcher uh, who give uh, good presentations, even for the beginners who are in the first year of a PhD. And uh, it was a good experience for you. And I think that uh, we learn a lot. I was also very happy with the exchanging in, uh, with, the, uh, um, with the, the person who present and the, uh, the people who are in the room. Uh, it was very, very interesting because even in some big conferences, we don't have these exchanges. So people was very, uh, how to say that, familiar, and it was, uh, they, uh, they were comfortable with this situation and they asked all the questions. So it was very, very interesting for us. Um, this conference uh, was possible uh, because we have these two people. I would like to applaud them warmly because um, the ISGA sponsored entirely this conference. Uh, in general, if you look to the other conference, you have a lot of sponsors in order to have something less than the one we had here. So, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Judy and Mr. Benzakur, and a, a warm thanks for all the people of ISGA who participated to the organization. Um, it was a great experience, and we, have, we hope that we will organize it uh, another moment, maybe in 2019. I propose to do it in Nancy, but when I came here, I had two other propositions one in Marrakesh and one maybe in Cairo. So, <laughs> so we have to discuss, it could be interesting. A good conference has to move from one city to another one. So uh, we will discuss, so if I ha we have people abroad, ISJ will be the most uh, uh, contributor to the conference. So it could be very interesting even for ISJ to, to have it in another place. So, what I have to say uh, else, I think uh, I say thank you for everyone. Uh, so, before ending, we have to proceed to, uh, um, to the traditional Best Paper Award, but maybe before uh, doing that, we would like to give presents for people who accepted to come from uh, Japan, from United States, and from France. So to give them a small present from ICNLSP and ISGA. So maybe we can uh, proceed with this, and then we go to the best paper. Ils sont comment à l'intérieur Parce qu'il y a le nom ou pas Je suis à ISGA, je l'ai dit aujourd'hui, et j'ai toujours apprécié votre sérieux et votre professionnalisme. Et j'espère que je vous souhaite une longue vie pour ISGA et pour ses dirigeants, bien sûr. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. La deuxième, la deuxième keynote, a été donnée par le professeur Yves Lepage de l'Université de Fazida. Donc, s'il vous plaît, venez. Let him. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I, I want to thank you really uh, very much. I, I have no other word than uh, thank you, Shukran. <laughs> it was my first, my first time in Morocco. It was fantastic. Again, shukran. Thank you. The third one, the 
keynote given by Dr. Olivier Sion from Google USA. So thank you very much for coming and for your excellent... So if you would like to say a word, I, don't, I, don't, I know that you don't want to speak a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So thank you again. I'd like to thank the organizer. And also, it was my first time in Morocco, and I was very, very pleased with my visit. Thanks again. Thank you. The fourth one was uh, Dr. Ahmed Zitouni from Microsoft. I knew him when he was uh, very young. But today is longer, taller than me, <laughs> older than <laughs> me also. <laughs> so thank you very much, Imad, for uh, your contribution and for your excellent presentation. So. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the organizer, and I am really pleased to see this kind of organization and this work in North Africa. Uh, I am from North Africa, and I appreciate to see things happening in this part of the world. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, and keep doing the right, uh, the, the good work, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. The last one is. Uh, uh, the tutorial given uh, by Professor Karim Buzuba. I was very happy with your uh, presentation. And uh, the idea uh, for this tutorial ca uh, came from you. And I ap uh, really appreciate that you accepted to come and to give us these uh, details. I think a lot of people here working on, uh, on Arabic know um, knew this, uh, this platform, but now um, I think that you will, the number, the count you presented will increase, and I hope that, and by, uh, I wish you a lot of uh, success with, with this platform. Thank you very much, uh, Karim. Uh, In Arabic, no? It will be, it will be fun in Arabic. Shukran jazeelan. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, now, okay, we finished. For the trophy, yes, for the best paper. Okay, this is always complicated for the, the best papers. Uh, I would like to explain how we did it, because it is always in conferences so complicated. Uh, you can have several models. Maybe one day we can train um, a model based on uh, <laughs> learning uh, uh, a deep, uh, uh, yes, a deep uh, a DNN in order to to retrieve the best paper among all the papers presented in the world. So, but we don't have the solution for uh, until now. So, what we did. Uh, we took the fourth, not being accepted, to the best one, which was score 30, 35. But you know, the score is, is nothing, so, because it's just an appreciation of the reviewers. Papers, because for the reviewers, we asked them to select the paper for to be or not best paper. They have a button to... Crochet. Uh, to check, yeah, thank you, to check. And some papers have, uh, have, have been checked for the best paper, to be the best paper, but their score was not in the four first, the four first uh, articles. So we took one or two of these papers which have been proposed by the, uh, the reviewers to be uh, proposed to this, and I asked, um, I, don't, I asked the colleagues, senior researcher, very experimented, as Jean-Paul Atton, Yves Lepage, Ahmed Zitouni. I uh, asked, of course, Olivier Sion, but Olivier Sion denied because he is uh, involved in some papers. I don't ask myself 
to participate because I was involved in several articles and I asked also Professor Franck Poirier to be in this committee to select the, the best paper and to propose three first papers, the three best papers. So uh, we did a doodle with different papers and they had to select for, in their opinion, not just by uh, the title, they read the comments of the reviewers, and after several days, ah, yeah, also, you have Karim Buzuba also, so excuse me, uh, Karim Buzuba also, Professor Karim Buzuba also participate to this, uh, um, to in this committee, in order, all, all the people who were, have a keynote or tutorial. And we arrive at to the result, okay? This is the method. I don't have a better one, but maybe we can organize a conference in order to know how to select the best paper. Okay, so we will give you uh, the result. We will start with the third first, the third best paper. Troisième. Ask Jean Paul to come here to help us to give him So, why did you choose me? Because he took a paper from Nancy? No. <laughs> so, the third best paper is uh, has four authors Denis Jouvet, Denis Langlois, Mohamed Amin Menasser, Dominique Faure, Odile Mella, and Professor Kamel Smiley. And the title is about vocabulary adaptation for automatic speech recognition of video data. <laughs> and, and this is David Langlois who received the award. So thank you. And, uh, I guess that all the offers will be IP for, for this uh, present. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the second best paper will be given by Professor Yves Lepage. So we'll make it the Japanese way. <laughs> so I will call either Mohamed El Feki, Parisa Ahani, Seo Jing Li, Eugene Weinstein, or Weinstein or Pedro Moreno to come. <laughs> we'll make it the Japanese way. <laughs> so you stand here and I say, this best paper award is presented to you for your outstanding paper entitled Employing Context Independent GMMs to Flat Start Context Dependent CTC Acoustic Models which was presented at the 2017 International Conference on Natural Language, Signal and Speech Processing, November, <laughs> uh, Professor Kamil Smiley and Dr. Mohamed Duri. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for the conference, for the organization and everything. And see you uh, next year or in two years in Egypt. Okay. <laughs> okay, we do our best to, to organize it in, in Egypt. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I will ask Professor Karim Buzuba to come to give the first best paper. Uh, the first best paper, the winner is, don't give the name. Uh, this paper has been selected for its originality. This is something which was very different. It was not uh, something we uh, found in other, or we read in, in, uh, in other 
publications or conferences. So I will uh, give the floor to uh, Professor Karim Bouzouba. And the winner is Fadi Al Gawanmi and Kamel Smaili. Yes. was original also in the presentation because he sings. The, this is the first time you saw this kind of, uh, of event in, in, in conferences. So, but it was, this was done before the presentation. So maybe uh, if uh, you, you sang before, maybe we refuse to give you this. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. Just joking. Uh, well, I just want to say I'm, I'm really happy. I'm, uh, I'm glad I, to be here, and uh, it's really interesting. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we give this uh, for uh, Mr. Ismail, uh, Ismaili, who was uh, the idea for this conference and organized this conference. 